Hi, Stephil. I see you. All right, everybody, welcome to Geek Together. It's Saturday night, and as we've been doing since way back in May, uh, we're having another artist interview tonight, and we're, uh, we're really, we've are we been looking forward to this one for a long time, trying to get a schedule and the timing. Uh, first is your host, Damien, with me as always. Christina. And uh, thank you for joining us, Jessica Emmett, um, artist, designer, toy designer, sculptor, all, all things. Great, been <laughs> huge fan. Huge fans of your work for a long time. Christina has uh, got quite the collection. Um, and she really does. Your work. <laughs> and anyway, Jessica, it's uh, what, 10 in the morning there in Singapore now? It is 10 so, in the morning. I'm not a really big morning person, so I'm just very happy to be awake. <laughs> wow, we're glad you made it. I'm glad the times actually work out. Like, God, it's not like it something does. like 6 in the morning or something. That would be not Oh, working. yeah, no, no. <laughs> in fairness, if you'd said it was 3 in the morning, because it's you guys, I still would have said yes. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> How nice. That's awesome. That's well, so luckily, cool. we didn't have to do that. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, well, uh, as I talked to you a little bit about before the show, we'll start off today with what we got. Uh, oh, first, Robbie had a family uh, event, so he couldn't make it, as well as Clint last minute couldn't make it. So uh, I hope it's all good news. I'm sure, I'm sure it is, but they couldn't make it. But that's okay. Because honestly, we want to take all the time to talk to you anyway. They don't matter that much. It's it's okay. They don't mind. No, I'm, just kidding. I'm just kidding. I love the guys, but if I but as Trish and get together, we buy way too many toys, and enough so that Christine and I always have something to show off. So we show off something new we've gotten uh, recently, and a little bit of the story behind it. And I'm going to go first. I usually don't, but I'm going to go first here. So I've been looking at this guy's art for a long time, and I finally. Bit the balloon got it. It's a porcelain skeletor. Wow. So very um very delicate, very cleanly done. I mean, he was making a mold of a skeletor, right? But you got the arm on it and everything is porcelain. Um, not much more to say about it than that. It's not painted or anything like that, but it's pretty cool. Um, even the the weapons. This one I'm a little scared of because it's funny. Did you say porcelain? Yeah, porcelain, yeah. Really? Oh like I have no idea how yeah, people yeah. make porcelain toys. I don't know how they do it either. Uh, I, wa I watch his Instagram a lot. I'll have to link it later. You can hear it. Wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to break it right now on, on camera. But Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, I, I, it's fun the funny thing, when I picked up like, the staff, because I have a lot of Skeletor pieces, like, it even has the curve of the plastic. Because <laughs> you can never get these things straight. They never come out of the toy box straight. So it even has that. Wow. And, detail. And the, yeah, that's right. And the detail. I mean, although you would think, I was thinking to myself a little bit selfishly, like, what, really? You can't make his porcelain straight? Like, I don't understand. Like, yeah. <laughs> But maybe it was going for the the the, the duplicative of the... Uh, the actual toy. The actual yeah, toy. Yeah. But it's really cool. Yeah. It was um, cool. I don't know how he's going to hold stuff. I got to keep it away from my, my kids because they'll break it. It came with some museum wax. You have to use the wax. I have to use museum wax to get it to stand. Or it has a, the fight. Oh, one funny thing. This is the, the stand that it made. Again. Porcelain is not a cheap thing to go after, and the work that he does. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but the funny thing is, the stand for this, and I'm not. By the way, I'm not knocking it because I really love the piece. You're a little bit. A little. <laughs> <laughs> it's a piece of wood. It's a skeleton and pencil with a nail on it, <laughs> and, a, and a penny nail, right? There you go. It goes, shows it there, it's a, but it's like even a pointy nail. Like it's like a hard. Like it's, I mean, if it stands, it stands right. <laughs> oh, it stands. It stands. It stands great. But it's just funny. It's, I told him I, I'd at least paint the, the wood, so it's not. 
yeah, just yeah. a piece of unfinished wood. <laughs> oh, I try to avoid making anything with stands because I I probably could make it look good. It actually sounds it, it sounds like really easy to make a stand, but you have to put quite a lot of thought into what it looks like. <laughs> mm, yeah, we just went through that, Christina. Well, oh, did you? <laughs> the one that I made with the stand, I attached it to its feet, like it can't be removed. Oh, really? Oh, like like fully it's, like, attached. It is, it is <laughs> UV resin attached to the stand. <laughs> Wow. Yep. Okay. Um, that must yeah. be a big piece. <laughs> like, well, no, Dahlia's just it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big headed Dahlia. That's what it is. It oh, yeah. Piece. Oh, yeah. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, a very, he very heavy girl here, you know. <laughs> uh, a lot of my work has big heads. I, yeah. I totally get it. <laughs> it's a little unbalanced. So the last one we did, we, we did with the stand. But enough about yep. me. <laughs> well, now, now we're going to go to you, Christina. What did oh, you get right. this week? <laughs> oh, I got my I got my porcelain skull torch. I didn't know I needed it until I got it. And now, yeah. <laughs> um, well, this we got from Smicon last week. One of the, oh wow, the uh, tiny ghost by Clav. That's awesome. Yeah, he did That's really seriously awesome. I love I love the <laughs> little skeleton on the backside. But it's, I mean, he's so good at customs, and it's yeah. such a good custom like platform. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, his, well, his tiny ghost is, very is just unique. it's a very blank canvas. Tiny ghost, it is. right? I mean, it's like scarily so, actually. Yeah, yes. yeah, <laughs> you can do literally anything with a tiny ghost, it's kind yep. of amazing. You can, yeah, that, that, yep. that's, that's about it. So, this is yeah, wow. that one came from so from Smicon last week. He did what, how many was it? 20, I, I want to say 20. I don't think it was 20. 12, I want to say maybe 20. Maybe 12. 12? But they were all different, like different colors. Some of them had some patterns. I got the one I wanted, actually, because I wanted the blue with the red eyes. And so, yep. look, how lucky is that? Yeah. I, I think some, Robbie said it was rigged because I know Jonathan at SmyCon. I'm like, no, it wasn't rigged. Like, I, I, trust me, yeah. I would rig. I don't like, think you ever told him which one you liked. You just. I did not tell him which. I did not tell Jonathan which one I liked. I liked them all. I didn't care. And I don't. I never going to. Look, here's the bottom line. I may ask Jonathan for favors. I'm not going to waste it on the random one. <laughs> like, hey, you know, I, uh, why? I'm not going to, you know, waste it there. But uh, I'd be the first one to admit that I got, you know, helped out on it. But I didn't. But I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, I would have been happy with any of them, but I was really happy we got the. I wanted the red eyes. Any of the ones with the red eyes, because I thought they popped really nicely against the, yeah. the rest of the paint job. Hey, Clint, welcome. Nice to see you. And let's see what's join us. Uh, Dead Boy Two Thirteen. Ben Feldman's here. Princess K eight E, nice to see you, Kitty back. Nice to see you again. All I'm right, Jessica. You, Princess Kate. Of okay. course it is. Of course it is. And that's you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I, of course. Thank you, Christina. That's that's. I and need your help, guess. obviously. No, I think you're right. Princess Kate makes sense. I am just reading it very literal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't buy toys every week because I really can't afford it. <laughs> but um, I got two last week. Um, one is. Uh, a pop mart one. Oh, so cute. I know I've been trying to get this one for a while and it was just really lucky <laughs> in the box. It. So it was uh oh I'm so bad at pronouncing names. It's um Mum uh Mum E G oh uh, Mummy G. Oh yeah, okay. Like, no, I mean, oh sorry, sorry. I'm so yep, I, I apologize. I can't Mom say Mom names, G, I'm yes. so dyslexic. <laughs> okay, and then the other pieces I got a pair. Um, they, they're really tiny, so I hope I can hold them to the camera well enough. Uh, it's a local artist in Singapore called uh, Daniel Yu. Oh, oh. I did. I did see those somewhere on. I think on Instagram. They are I didn't so they were tiny. So I mean, like he calls them micro, and you have to believe that. <laughs> they are micro. Yeah, <laughs> that's a crazy amount and, of detail in such a small. I know. I, I was just like. I mean, because like. Normally, I don't go for like horror stuff. I, I'm much more like cute or maybe a bit goth or something like that. But like, I love Daniel's work because he is so detailed. He's like, yeah, one of the best sculptors like that I've that I've met <laughs> that I can say that I know. <laughs> like, that sort of fits the theme though because they're like yeah. pastel colors at least. Well, <laughs> why do you think I begged him? <laughs> like, I was just like. Um, I saw that you do these pastel things. Please, can I get some? That's right. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So the, the, those are the latest ones that I They're have. Pretty good. But yeah, I have I, quite I, eclectic, um, like collecting taste, but mostly cute. <laughs> like, 
And then I got I actually got one more thing, and I'll post the details on it later when I get a chance. I just forgot I got these. I got these minis. Little oh, bear, little teddy okay. bears. Oh, they're called the up? world. It's like the world series, but check this out. It's like um shake it. Oh <laughs> and they light up. Oh wait, it lights up. That's it lights awesome. up and they're all like different. Like think this is uh Jupiter Saturn or something. This is Jupiter because that's the big guy. Yeah. This oh, is yeah, Jupiter. I can see it now. Yeah. The Jupiter wow. in the head, and it's like busting out of the seams, like the threading. Is it actually a... string? No, it's, it's plastic. It's like yeah. Oh it's wow. Here here, like, well, here is actually like string, but it's like waxed. No, it's oh, not. It's like, oh, it's, oh, oh, no, it's oh, not. It's not. It's plastic. It's plastic. It's just very flexible. But it's like, but it's like oh, the, wow. um, the eye popped off there. They're, yeah, they're cool. so cool. I've seen them online. Yeah, they're pretty neat. Uh, um, I, I did. I bought them as a whim. I bought them from um, Bubble Wrap, actually. Oh, I love that shot, by the way. There's the earth. <laughs> you know, did you know that the, I was in their launch and my one of my pieces was the first thing they ever sold in their shop? <laughs> really? Really? Yeah, so like I, I'm a... Uh, I'm a part of the little bit part of their history. Well, <laughs> so. I'm sure. I'm sure you're part of a lot of histories. Uh, <laughs> no. with, um, how long? Uh, how long you've been doing this? So enough about. But I don't that long, honestly. I've, I'm still. I've considered myself very new, actually. Well, you know, I. I well, we'll get into it then. How, so, you know, we want to learn a little bit about the kind of history, how you ended up into designer toys and sculpting and everything you're doing. So, what is your, is your um do you have a background like education in art? Did you go to school for art? I mean, actually I've, I do have an education in art, but it's actually photography. I mean, yes, that's technically art. That is art. <laughs> like, that is art. Yeah. 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 I did. It was uh, quite contemporary. The kind of stuff I did. Um, I used to do more like um, really serious, serious art, like, <laughs> you know, looking at the human form and like autobiographical, like really serious deadpan stuff. And then um, I think that like, before I got to university, I used to love drawing like dragons and fantasy. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a tutor unfortunately tell me that it wasn't real art. And I took it really to heart because I wanted to be an artist when I grew up. So I was just like, oh, that's, oh, okay. <laughs> and then, so like, I stopped doing it. And it's taken me like two decades to get back to doing it because I have to ignore basically. It's hard as a kid, you, when you're told advice from a professional right. that you shouldn't do something, you know, you listen. And then it took me that many long to realize that not everybody who says things to you knows how the world works. <laughs> <laughs> Or also, there's a different, or there's so, a so subjective. Like you can't like maybe some people don't feel like uh, fantasy stuff is art, but there's a lot of us geeky people that do. I know, right? <laughs> so, I, th I, think well, I mean, I know that and, now. <laughs> I think I think it's art. And I think it's talent. I mean, if you saw me yeah. draw a dragon, let me tell you, it may not be art, <laughs> but uh, I would I would appreciate the work on it. It is funny how people do like to assert their opinions as fact. Yeah, yeah I mean one of the hardest things that I've had to do as an artist, it was only maybe like, I don't know, actually around the time that you actually met me in Singapore was just as I was starting to even realize that. Um, I started doing a lot more fantasy art. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if you know this, but um, you know, Dark Crystal, the Age of Resistance, they did a global competition for a character creature design. Um, uh, there was one winner, but then there was only like three runners up and I was a runner up. And oh, I was nice. like, oh, okay. So I love doing this. And it was like really validating to have one of my biggest influences as a child, like the dark crystal. Like, Is that the, the creature that like hangs from its tail? If I can remember. Yes, that. that's right. You're right. I don't follow the Instagram one. at all. No, 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 it's fine. It was such a long time ago. Okay, Christina has a, a little. Christina has a little bit of a stalker. Oh no, it's fine. Bit, so I apologize now if it gets creepy. But. It's okay. It's all public. <laughs> <laughs> if you said it and it was just like a photo hanging in my house and nowhere else, then I'd have concerns. But you well, know, like if it's public, I I can't really say much, right? <laughs> I do. I do remember. Um, I put you you posting about it. I, I probably it posted really, about it. Just, <laughs> it, it sticks in my mind just because your character design is so unique. Um, Thank you. I really appreciate that. And and that's what it. it yeah, your your illustrations are amazing. 
I don't have so, any. I, so yeah, I think um, it took me that long to get back to it. Like, so I went through photography, a little bit of film. Um, I did quite a lot of community work, um, art workshops and things like that. Uh, then I went into design. And then finally I got to illustration because um, what happened was during the financial crisis, you know, um, we were really affected by that. And I was literally imminently meant to go and do a PhD. Um, and it was going to be in adoption and art and how adoption narratives are represented in the media and and storytelling because I'm adopted and I find that yeah. adoption is often represented quite poorly <laughs> like like it's always I mean like every superhero is adopted but it's not that realistic the way they represent adoption occasionally they get it all right <laughs> like do you know what I mean? so I was mm -hmm. interested in that narrative as a as an artist so the one thing I will say about university is I did gain like a contemporary thinking. And I think that mm -hmm. even though I do really cute stuff now, I think that, that that contemporary idea still is very strong in my work. Well, so, there's, a funnel, there's a fundamentals yeah. to draw from, right? I mean, I know a lot of artists that never went to college for it, right? Or never went yeah. to university. Oh yeah, I don't think you have to go. No, I don't, I don't think so either. But I do, th <laughs> but I, but I do think there's a value um, in and what you don't get exposed to, right? If you go in your own and you're just learning art, you're learning to paint, you've never really been, ex even if you went to university for something else, there are a lot of fundamentals that you don't know you're doing. Exactly. You know, you don't know yeah, what yeah. style you're after. You don't know what you're emulating. You don't know different things. You don't know, what, and there's a, there's like a, I remember um, a friend of mine was developing a book for, actually for artists, for art, because he had a lot of people that were clients that were going into the art field and they were professionals that were really talented. They were just writing on their own talent. Right, no different than yeah, any other yeah, artist, yeah. whether it be musicians yeah, yeah, or anything yeah. else, right? Yeah. But he wrote like this incomplete education book, not to be a knock on it, but to give him like the cliff notes of different styles of art, what it meant, what the movements were, and what it, you know, it, you know, it makes a, it's, it's a good foundation, even if it's not yeah, your I mean, styles. It's, it's definitely good to know some history, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't have, you don't have to know it to get into it, but like, you know there's re rep repetition, you know, yes. and there's, uh, there's always lessons to be learned, you know, regardless. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely. I hear you. And I, I think the thing is like, ironically at university, I actually wasn't taught fundamentals that well. I had to huh. pick up a lot of it. Like, so a lot of it was in, on my course, it was more like theory. So there was a mm -hmm. lot more, you know, ideas and stuff, not like the, the actual fundamentals of photography, we were kind of like left to learn that. <laughs> so yes, we had the resources like dark rooms. Yeah, I know dark rooms, right? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, who does that anymore, right? <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, we were literally on the cusp. I stopped doing photography in the dark room because the doctors told me that I was, um, uh, I suffer quite badly from SAD. I don't know, if, like yep. it's just basically yep. if you don't get enough sunlight. Seasonal effects. Yeah, exactly. So I was going in in the morning, coming out late at night, getting zero sunlight, and it affected me really, really badly. And the doctors basically was like, uh, no. And I was like, but what am I supposed to do? I'm at a photography course. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got a really, really a crappy digital camera that I could afford at the time. It was so bad because the technology was so new at the time. Like when you press the clicker, there was like lag. So you yeah. click it. And then it would take a picture. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got hand. good at predicting. Yeah. <laughs> I got good at predicting what people were going to do. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, so um, it, it came real full circle. Um, and I think once I got to illustration, I started realizing that that was really what I wanted to do, kind of like fantasy creature stuff. And that I shouldn't have to worry too much about trying to do what other people told me to do. So it's kind of going back to what you said earlier. You know, there's a lot of people wanting to input into my career and telling me what to do. And like the worst advice I was given was like, oh yeah, just like don't be yourself and just like, you know, just like fake it until you make it and stuff like that. And I tried it. I just can't do that kind of brass kind of like going up to people and going like, yeah, I'm so awesome. You should hire me immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't do that. Right. 
I'm in the same boat. That is not yeah. that is not my personality trait. <laughs> it's, well, exactly. I think there's so many people in this world that are like that. And I, I don't think there were that many people who were that confident. That's, you know, so people are constantly saying, you should be self-confident. I'm like, you know, I would if I could. <laughs> <laughs> you can't but, just tell people to be confident it yeah, doesn't yeah. work that way but but that I, is a lot of business advice you know <laughs> like, <laughs> this is, it's funny it's the second time today i've heard somebody use the uh the term imposter syndrome i feel oh, like a wow. lot of our yes, artists suffer that. from, from the imposter syndrome <laughs> yeah i mean actually the best piece of advice i got very true was um uh I was at, okay, at one point, just before Designer Toys, I thought I wanted to do children's illustrations and comics, right? Because um, mm -hmm. I actually knew more people in the comics, so I thought, oh, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> but, it was, but maybe children's books, I would have loved to do that, actually. Um, but I was at an event, and there was a, a famous um, guy there. Um, and then I asked him, like, how do you, what advice do you give to new people? And he just said, be brave. And I was like, what? These two simple <laughs> words were just like, oh, I don't have to change. I can just be me, but braver. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? I, like suddenly I was like, I, I can do this. Yes. You know, I realized that there was room in this world for me and the way that I function. I don't have to function like someone else. Does that make sense? Oh, yes. totally. For yeah. sure, yeah. Well, I think that's a big thing. And, and look, we've talked to whether it be on the show or just at the show at different cons or like that, we've been fortunate enough to meet a lot of artists. And it's funny to see how similar, like very rarely, very rarely do I meet a fully arrogant, confident <laughs> out there artist that just knows what they want to do. And is like, you know, just, just everything's going to be great. And everything I touch is gold and whatever. No. And most people I meet are like, are people going to like the things that I like? Are people going to yeah. like what I put out there? No matter exactly. how successful they are, like, even people like, you know, Ron English, who, I don't know, why would he even, but he's just like, oh, maybe people like it. I don't know. Don't care. He does have a little bit of confidence now. He should. But Well, I mean, I think at yeah. least after, uh, if you've been in it for a long time, yeah. I think you, you're allowed to have some. <laughs> like, right, but, but it is amazing <laughs> that even someone that I would look at as like such a celebrity in the space or like when I met Futura, and I'm talking to him about art and like when he went from street to now he's doing toys and like, did you think it would translate? He's like, ah, they asked me to do it. I was surprised. Like I was, it was almost like the humility is still there. Mm -hmm. Like not taking anything for granted. My point is like a lot, I see a lot of that personality in artists um, mm -hmm. across the board. Now I do see it reflected also in, you know, they take the comments very seriously. It's really easy to, you know, cause, <laughs> Well, you know what I mean? Like it's hard to take criticism. Right? You put your love I, in what you do. I, I've, I'm quite thin-skinned. I, 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 I feel bad, and I, I get a bit defensive sometimes. I try not to. I try to be quite aware of it, but um, but like most of the time, I'm quite open to 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 it. But I prefer it when it's like more controlled. Like so, I don't like it when it's unsolicited. Do you know what yeah, I mean? So right. like, I mean, if I openly say, hey, what do you guys think of that? Then I'm kind of like, okay, that's fair. If people can say what they want, right? But if right. I'm just like putting up a post, nothing, and just, and then people just like, whoa, why mm -hmm. haven't you done this and that? And I'm just like, um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's it's one right? thing if you're asking for opinions for improvement, yeah, 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 yeah. improvement and yeah. it's a completely other thing when you're like, I have this fully formed thing that I'm proud of. Yeah, <laughs> like, it is. Then you post it, and somebody's like going to pick it apart and ask why this is there. Really but but don't get me wrong. I actually, <laughs> even with the criticisms that I find a bit like a bit like oh oh <laughs> like uh, cry, <laughs> but like um uh I I still learn something from those. You know, like even even the people who were horrible, I still learn something. Mm -hmm. there you <laughs> go. You know I mean? So yeah, I think there is something to be learned by a lot of artists. Yeah. yeah. As long as you can have that outlook, I think, I think it helps. And I think that's where, uh, you know, recently while we're on the subject, I had a friend who they just launched a new kind of engagement platform. And then the first comment somebody made was like, Oh, I hate this stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and you, like, like, why you know, did you feel the need to say that? <laughs> I don't understand it. Yeah. That's what I said. I mean, my first opinion was like, one, it doesn't matter. 
Yeah. Two, that's the problem. That's the problem and the blessing of art is that it's all subjective. It's like mm -hmm. what I love in my what my house is covered in could just more could just offend another person. Like they could just want to throw up in my house if they come in. I don't know. But <laughs> I, know. I, I, mean, I don't I don't but I don't understand the flip side of it. Like why what did you think that comment was going to do? Like what did that do for you? <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, it says a lot more about the commenter, of obviously, yeah, always, yeah, always, always. I mean, like, I mean, the thing is not to say that I've never given unsolicited advice either. Like, and I feel bad <laughs> about it. So like, I can't, like, I can't, I can't be too hypocritical in this situation. I do it all the time to my wife. <laughs> I give her, oh, man. I give her unsolicited advice, and she look, and I get, but I know, I know when I get the look to shut up. <laughs> I know well, what I look it is. Thing. If you well, get, if you get unsolicited advice you have to expect that you 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 can get the look and that you, you know, can't complain if you get the look exactly. you know what well, we're getting at yeah. <laughs> and, and try to he'll point out something like on a work in progress he'll point out something and i'll be like yeah i know it's there thanks i can't <laughs> fix it yet <laughs> Yeah. I was hoping you wouldn't notice it, so I don't have to fix it. <laughs> or what do you well, think, think of this? Yeah. When someone notices something that you just like hope that would just go under the radar. Yeah. Like I've done it before where I put something up and I'm like, I just I hope no one notices that. I hope no one and then someone will notice it. I'm like, no. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't notice it. like I thought I hit it well enough, you know. <laughs> That's what I usually pick out because I'm a very uh I look at that kind of stuff really closely, but but I know I'll say, "What about this?" And she'll give me a look. I'm like, "Never mind." I think it's perfect the way it is. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> I, I, mean, I, feel, I I have to admit that I do actually feel really bad for my husband. He's so supportive, but like, I think I like I ask too much of him. So if I say, "What do you think?" and then like he'll be like, "Oh, I like it," and I'm like, "But like." Why? Because I, I don't know. I just like it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Or like if he says something, then I'll be like, I'll just, I'll be like, oh no, it's really bad. If it's like even slightly not like the best, you know, the best comment or <laughs> like, even though I know he likes my work. <laughs> it's so funny. Chrissy is the same way. Like she'll say, what do you think of this? And if I make a comment, like, <laughs> she'll just know from my look that it's I a, it's like, a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> well, uh, she'll just see from my look like what I'm trying to say. Like she'll know when I like love something or not. I'm really good about the if I love it, I give the why. Like I love it because of this, 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 this. this. Oh, it fits into that. I really like. I try to elaborate as much as possible in it. Um, but when it's bad, but then we'll have those moments where she's just like, I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> oh, no, <I> <laughs> like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh my god, please put it back together. Put it back together. No, I, I, uh, I can assure you, I have art breakdowns on a regular basis. Like the thing is, like with art, this is the thing. Like I don't know how you explain it. Kind, it's kind of like you're kind of working it out, and like you're kind of coaxing out the final piece. So you're just kind of working on it and one minute it will look absolutely horrific and the next minute you'll be like yes it's great and then you'll work on it some more and you're like no what have i done it was fine before and then and then basically that is literally the exact process it's where really it just goes up and down and you're just like from from yes it's great to oh no what have i done and then as an artist, you just have to make sure that you end on the "oh, it's okay" like part. And like, you gotta stop there. You gotta stop working on it. You gotta be like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah exactly. Like yeah. being an artist is knowing where to stop. <laughs> like, it's so true. I've said that to Damien lots of times, and like the reason I don't like paint on stream and stuff, I'm like, because it looks like garbage until it's ninety percent done. <laughs> like it I looks, mean. I'm like, it just looks a mess until you're like this close to being done. That's true. People I, have asked for stream. Done it once. Sorry. No, I was gonna say people have asked her to stream and she's like, it's so boring. They're gonna watch me just paint over all these things. Like, I don't even want to do it. Literally gonna watch paint dry. You know what? <laughs> I I updated all of my streaming gear recently. I got a new camera, Ooh. I got a new mic, because I am seriously considering it. Because oh, that'd be nice. Like, I don't know. I uh, maybe it's just like a better version of my phone to take, you know, whips with offline. But people have been saying it to me for years, so I'm I am considering it, but I haven't, I've I, no, there's I no like definite, this is artists. not an announcement. <laughs> like, I like watching artists on stream. I think it's great. I don't, I don't know that I have the personality to, to entertain people while watching paint dry. Oh, <laughs> I know. Cause like, that's the thing. Like people are like, oh wow, that was so amazing. I was like, that's like a really boring part. <laughs> like, but people have 
fascinated by it. And I, I that's cool if they are. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think that the things that, uh, again, I think it's all about saving the, like, look, you work a lot longer than you would stream. And so my, my you know, as, a, as somebody who watches it or I think about creating content for it, I would recommend you save the work pieces that truly, like, scape, like do sculpting. Like, when you're doing a sculpting or creating something, like, that's something I think people are really fascinated by because that's a talent that's hard to do. And you may think it's easy because you're talented at it and you've done it for so long, but I, it's hard. <laughs> I watch sculpting. it. It looks like magic to me. Like, I don't know how she does it. Like, Christina, Seriously. that's her thing. Sculpting is not my thing. I swear. Uh, to, I swear. I it, Drawing, so precise, drawing is my thing. I can do drawing. Um, but like sculpting is something that I've always enjoyed doing as a kid. Like I used to do like FEMO and things like that, you know, like Paula McClay, even mm -hmm. as a kid. But mm -hmm. as an adult, like I feel like, I mean, you can see a lot of my stuff is very simple in, in, in it, it comparatively, comparatively. Um, but like, so I just kind of do the best I can within the limited skill set that I have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, seriously. Well, well then. <laughs> Well, if that's your lowest, then you got you got some really good upside. So that's great. Christina does a lot of that in the painting, and but I think you do the finished painting. I don't think you do the the big block painting or the fifty coats of white or you know whatever it is that you have to do, right? Um, I don't know. So getting back sorry, to what, what's that? Go ahead. Sorry, the fifty coats of white. What's whatever your, she your, paints? Your fifty coats of red. I should say red or yellow. Like oh yeah, I know. Painting. Yeah, if you oh, want to get a flat your, color. Yeah, oh, sometimes it can take so coat. long. <laughs> Exactly. You so don't want like, to scream that. You don't know. I did you one do, custom. Like, <laughs> I did one custom tiny ghost, and I was just doing oh, a base. I was doing a base coat of the tiny ghost. I was like, I felt very like, hey, I'm going to do arts and crafts with my wife today, you know. And so I'm like, got my little paint set up, and I'm painting this thing. And she's like, no, you got to water it down. I'm painting one coat. And I'm like, it looks like garbage. What are you talking about? It doesn't even look like I wanted to like glop it on. She's like, nope. So yeah, I, yeah, I said yeah, yeah. that <laughs> I was there doing like 50 coats of this orange thing on this tiny ghost to get it to cover. And then I just covered it in rhinestones because that was after she got the <laughs> rhinestone from you. Oh. And then, by the way, covering a five inch tiny ghost in rhinestones, do you know how much work oh. that was? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can imagine. That. <laughs> oh. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It came out good, though. I'm mean, I gonna say I, I feel like I retired at the top of my game. So I I, <laughs> Christina has one of the I, the I crystal uh, unicorns I did. And that yeah. there we go. really right. tiny. <laughs> like, and that takes that takes ages. It's <laughs> like, amazing though. The so if you're doing a tiny have... ghost, it's like Absolutely. at least 10 times the, get... the surface. Oh, that's typical <laughs> for me though. I'm like, why not make my first project be super ambitious and dumb like that? I could have started with something smaller, but no, I could start with a mini ghost. Go. She recommended I do a mini ghost. That's I'm like, mini why. ghost? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Who did the mini I'm a grown-up. I could do a big one. I did yeah. the mini ghost. Yeah, it's true. But like, it's, yeah. you know, gem doing gems is actually really fun. I haven't done that many lately, but like covering something in gems, it just makes everything glorious. <laughs> like, it, I, I will say the tiny ghost that we have that I did it looks really nice. It came out really good. I think it did. I'm pretty sure I've seen that. It was a while ago, right? A long time ago. Yeah, it was orange. Yeah, I feel like, like orange, I saw that. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure she posted it around. So going, so going back, you're in photography, you're making your, you're going oh, yeah. to illustration, you're looking at comics. Mm -hmm. So then you, you're, you're being brave. Oh, okay. I'm being brave. Okay. So I have a friend who's in comics and for years she's been saying, oh, you should just uh, go and do a con, go do a con. I'm like, oh no, I don't upset people. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Are there people at cons? Yeah. Yes, I'm just like, oh. but, yeah. um, I, I just moved to Singapore and I um, I hadn't even been to many cons like as an attendee even that much. Mm -hmm. But I, I just moved to Singapore and we had some friends who were flying in to actually uh, booth at the con uh, in Singapore. So um, it used to be called um, STGCC, but now it's Singapore Sing uh, Comic Con. Um, but like uh, they came and then we started talking to a bunch of people just like artists and stuff like an and then we, I started doing things in the community and I ended up doing a web comic. And then as the next year rolled on, someone just openly said, hey, does anyone want to share a booth with me? And like, literally it was like a first come first serve type basis. Like, oh, I'll, I'll do it. And then I was just thinking, why did I do that? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like, I just, it was such a spur of the moment thing. So I'm, I, there was three of us sharing this booth 
and there was I had this like little tiny sliver of booth and one tiny little print of a web comic there was only like seven sing <laughs> and like and then um I was actually in a booth and right next to me it was Yoey and Wet Works. Oh wow. <laughs> so, oh wow. Yeah, so I, but it was it was it was Yoey's work that I, I was looking at it. It's very much to my taste is is Yoey's work. And I just saw people coming all day and I, I saw the price of them and I was just like, whoa. <laughs> it was just like, I, I wonder where they, where, where they got the manufactured. They look so beautiful. And they're so high quality. And obviously people love them. And like people were just coming in and out all day to their booth. And I was talking to her a little bit about, about the fact that she was mostly an illustrator and occasionally does these toys. Um, and then she she did them with wet works. Um, and, and I was like, oh, okay. And then the whole time I was thinking, I'm doing this little comic, but I want to be doing that. <laughs> like, I, like, I, I want to be doing that. I, I'd love to see my my illustrations come to life, you know, like, because I'm, I'm still always an illustrator at heart. I just, just designer toys is kind of just like an extension of that. Yeah. And yeah. then at the end, I didn't really talk to Carlo um, because he was on the other side. So at the right at the end of the con, I went up to him and I, I said, because I didn't know him, and asking people where their manufacturers are is actually a bit of a faux pas. But I thought, I was like, okay. I, I've looked at this guy's booth all day, uh, well, the whole weekend, and I was like, look, where did you get your stuff made? Do you mind if you tell me? I'd love to know. And he's like, oh, I make them myself. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, and he goes, and you can too. And I'm like, what <laughs> like, so literally that was the only conversation we had at that particular time literally he just like just said he made it and that it was possible and when someone tells you something is possible and in the past you know people were like oh you shouldn't do fantasy art it's not possible to be an artist to do that then it's it suddenly limits you and then as soon as someone says something is possible then some suddenly the the world opens right mm. so Almost immediately after that con, I went to my local little art shop, bought some resin and some and some uh, uh, silicon and stuff. But unfortunately, the kind of stuff the, that they sell in the shops is is often that kind of like craft resin. Yeah, okay, I'm not going to lie. It had a 72 cure time. Ooh. I am never doing that again. I did, I did, I did that <laughs> once. Yeah. I had to wait three days to find out that it was a really bad gas. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. That's the biggest waste of time ever. And I was so excited for three days. I was sitting there just like like with my nails, like just going, I hope it comes out. I hope it comes out. And I opened it. I was like, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I was still so amazed. I was Because so, I didn't know anything about pressure parts or anything like that. Um, also, in Singapore, the humidity can be a real issue. I so bet. even if you get a long cure resin, um, if you get moisture or humidity or anything like that inside, um, it, the bubbles can still happen. So mm. regardless of the, the, cure, the cure time of the resin. So you'd think that would put any normal person off, but um, I'm kind of one of these, I'm quite a determined person. So like, I was just like, yeah, okay, uh, try again. <laughs> But I didn't. I, it took me a few months to be brave enough to try again, actually, because um, mm. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. It put me off a bit. <laughs> oh, three I days. It. It's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then after that, like, I, I just saw it as like a, a a little extra thing, a little bonus to my illustration, because I was still. Like I'm going to do children's books. Like I was still yeah. like down that. Like uh, I was just like this was fun. And then the 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 next year um, was the first year I did toys, and I was like, they've nearly all sold out. I think I only had a few pieces at the end. I was like, what? <laughs> and I was just like, why? Because like I did a mini local con that didn't have very much. Like uh, didn't have it was mostly aimed at students and I wouldn't say that they had deep pockets for designer toys. <laughs> like, right. So, so um, I, I would say I didn't sell any then. I was like, oh, okay, all right. Okay. I'm still going to make them cause I like them. <laughs> and then the next one was uh, Singapore comic-con 
and yeah people were buying them and i was like oh okay but i was still focused on the illustration it was just kind of like i just stuck them to one corner in a booth you know just kind of like didn't really pay that much attention to them and by the end of it people were like oh jessica emmett new designer toy maker i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> i just kind of i just kind of like feel like i fell into this by accident <laughs> like you know I mean? That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> is that was that the it, con that Christina went to? Is that that? No, that, it was no. The, the the one that Christina went to was the year later. Oh, okay. So at this point, I'd discovered that yes, it's fantasy art. Yes, it's probably going to also be designer toys at that point. Yes, the, and, the year I was there, um, you mostly had toys, and then you had mm -hmm. um, like keychains and yeah. whatnot, and then your husband had his book. And you had oh yeah, no, that was the one I illustrated that he oh, also yes. that he wrote. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah. I think at that point we knew that like the the proportion of what was toys had grown, like yeah. within just a year. Like I, I think I, even though I was still definitely like yeah, I want to be illustration. I, I knew I think based on that booth, you could tell that like, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, like this, it was going to happen. This is my my first Jessica Emmett purchase. I, I remember that piece, yeah, yeah. you buying yeah. that piece very clearly, very, very clearly. So, um, okay, that was the year that Reese O'Brien was at Singapore Comic Con. Yes, and and he came he came through the booth like c before it was open that morning, like it was like the next day, it was like Sunday morning, mm -hmm. and then he said, "Oh, I I quite like the 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 unicorn with the skeleton." Obviously, I didn't know him at the time, but now it makes sense, right? <laughs> Like, right. <laughs> but right. I was just like, oh, okay. And then I was just like, oh, but um, the unicorns have been selling quite well. So if you want one, and but I didn't mean to like hard sell him at the time. <laughs> and then so he instantly bought one. I was like, oh, okay. Oh, thanks. You didn't have to do that, but thanks. Because I'm going to tell people about this. And I was like, you know, I'm just new to toys. And I'm just like, oh, sure. This famous guy is going to like, <laughs> like tell people about my work. Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, I was just like, that's a very nice sentiment. Yeah. But like, uh, you know, I appreciate that he said that in my booth. But I didn't think anything of it. And then you came later in the day. And you were like, Reese told me about your work. And I was like, oh, he actually said something. <laughs> he actually said something. I had oh, actually yeah. seen it earlier. And then I've like. I had been debating because I, oh, I, right, okay. I, I'm, 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 um, I don't generally buy the first thing I come across. Yeah, you know I, hear I, mean? you, I, I hear I you. think about things a, a while and sometimes it takes me a little while to actually decide <laughs> to buy something. But I, then, I'm the opposite. I just yeah. go bye, 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 oh, bye, bye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hope I like some of this stuff. <laughs> I, I had seen the pink one that or I was debating between them the day before and then I came back. And I'm like, no, I have to go get it. <laughs> You were lucky because after that, because he bought one, then you bought one, and then after that, the other one went very shortly after that. Yeah. So like, like yeah, I, I actually really love the skeleton design. I, and every time I make one for myself, someone wants to buy it. So I, like, I, I just still say, don't have a skeleton. It is a perfect um, example of of your illustration combined with the toys, because you've got Thank the you. you've got like all sorts of depth and the like the way. Oh yeah, I tried to put a tiny bit of shading, tiny. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's it's really beautiful. Actually, the camera isn't picking it up very well. It's it's very bright oh, it's pink. Fine. It's fine. It's it's very. But in fairness, neon neon doesn't like film very well. That's, that's <laughs> like, true. I I will have to take some better. I haven't I haven't photographed these in a long time. I'm gonna have to. That actually, like um, <laughs> this actually segues quite well into a piece that I'd like to show you guys. Okay. Um, that was the same year that I released a merlion. Yes. So yeah, that yeah. Was yeah the other thing I was debating on buying. Was oh really? Merlion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, you know what? I've not made that many merlions in general because they're quite a Singapore thing. Because I don't know if many people outside of Singapore know this, but the merlion is kind of like a symbol of Singapore. Um, it was actually created by Singapore. Like, so this this mythical creature didn't exist before Singapore invented it. <laughs> like, uh, and um, but because I love mythical creatures so much, and I I absolutely love Singapore. Um, at the time of making it. We, we thought the visa was going to run out. So I was like, I need to do an ode to Singapore. Does that make sense? Yes. But mm -hmm. that was like three years in and now it's like six. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, but, but so let me show you uh -huh. the original. I don't have any finished ones. Um, let me show you here. So oh. that was the original one. Yep. And I gave it a heart tail because I, um, 
I kind of, you know, I, I, I love the place. My heart's going to, uh, is going to always remain here because of the amazing people I've met here. So, um, I recently, I don't know if you've seen on my Instagram, I recently did a fun 3D sculpt because I'm learning still to do 3D sculpting. And because of the show, and at the time, because I didn't have any permissions at the time, I was like, I need to try and do something because, you know, I love Christina. I really need to do something <laughs> for her. So I got a rush of this. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, wow. Look at the details. That's on that. so beautiful. And so I want to do a huge shout out to the Harry Potter um, who <laughs> um, 3D printed it for me in a rush. And I put him through absolute 3D printing hell <laughs> this week. <laughs> like, it's beautiful. Uh, and if, if anyone in Singapore or in the world needs a 3D print, um, you can definitely check his, check his stuff out. Like, and, and I love his, he's actually a designer toy maker as well in Singapore. Um, mm. And he does... Uh, a mental health toy that I absolutely love. So I hope that, you know, we'll do other things in the future. But, um, you know, I, you know, like a lot of people think that like 3D printing or casting, like it comes out like super nice, like magic. But I tell you, this is like the second version because I messed it up. And also he had something happen where they did a firmware update or software update. And then suddenly, apparently, this hole here, um, it, it just closed up when it was printing. Like there was no, no reason for it other than that the, the basically you found out later that there was a software update and like this last past week and like loads of people complained about it and he could only print it sideways. <laughs> so if he printed it that way, there was no hole. He printed it that way, there was no hole. And then so he could only print it sideways. Wow. And he rushed me this bit yesterday after the first one on Friday. I messed up by over sanding it because it's hollow. So uh, I put a hole in one. No. And that was totally my fault. <laughs> and so he rushed me another piece on Saturday. And in the moment that it, it landed at my house, um, the, they did a software update to fix it. <laughs> of course, of course. And I think that says a lot about art, the art process. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, for even sure. 3D printing is like, very difficult like in terms of like getting it right and getting the technology to gel with with the resin casting it's all about the chemicals like you you could breathe on that stuff and it won't cure properly <laughs> do you know what i mean it's so crazy <laughs> I, I agree so uh, uh that's been the hard the the fun the most fun most frust frustrating part for me is you know my part when i try to help out christina is more on the technical side of it so figure like i I'm like, all right, I'm gonna figure out this resin thing. So I'm gonna I go right off to YouTube University. Oh yeah, I try hear to you. find that's where I learned. Try to find <laughs> stuff. 3D 3D print. I got a 3D printer, a bad 3D printer. Then I find out it was a bad 3D printer. So I ask people, so I can oh. get a new one. So I can get a better 3D printer. And then and then you find out, and then yeah, now it's 3D sculpting. But you, you know, we can't. It's hard to do everything. Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing is, I'm one of these people that I like to try and do everything. Mm -hmm. But I've got to this point this year that I've realized that I have to start. You know, expanding. Otherwise, I can't. I can't do it. So well, you'll spend I mean, so much time trying to do every step that yeah. you don't ever really accomplish a whole lot. Well, so, if you do everything, you can only do so much. Yeah, exactly. Right? And but yeah. it's like hard as a creative to like give up that process to someone else. And I've heard. I've I've really tried my best to like work with other people. And I have to admit that um, at first it was hard. Um, but I started realizing that this is going to free me up to do the things I want to do. So production is not my favorite thing to do. I'm good at it and I can get pieces out, but I can't get that many pieces out. No, so, no. Um, and also like I used to not um, send pieces to for retail to shops and stuff, but I've done a lot of that this year. So at the beginning of the year, I sent stuff to bubble wrap. Um, I put, I had some, I was very honored to be asked to showcase a, um, Pop Mart Singapore. And I so I had some stuff retail there and it's still showcasing there at the moment still, which is amazing. Um, and um, and so this actually segues also into to some other pieces that I wanted to show. So Perfect. I've got permission from two shops that are gonna be repping at um, uh, NYCC. And these are, these are exclusives and I've never shown these at all online um, yet. Okay, so the first one I'm going to show 
is uh, this one. Oh, wow. Ooh. So this is the Stormy Vaults exclusive. Thank you very much for letting me show this, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Yeah. So it was a bit early. To, that's why I had to ask because mm -hmm. obviously NYCC, the you know, October the marketing 6th for that is through the night. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's still a few weeks away. So I was very thankful that they allowed it. Um, I, now, love, I love the colors. That's amazing. I Now, the colors are very important to me because when I do things, I do things with meaning. So um, what I wanted to do is because this is the first con my work will be at for a, for a while. So, and it's been such a long time. I think um, Singapore Comic Con 2019 was the last thing, like con, that my work was at. And mm -hmm. so I'm calling this colorway um, Glimmer of Light. So I wanted to make it very dark to kind of reflect the time that, you know, that's been happening at the moment. Mm. You know, it's, it, do you know what I mean? Because like, we've had a lot of dark times, but we've yeah. all had to kind of hang on to these like small, glimmers of hope these small glimmers of light and because it's the only thing to keep us sane you know to keep our businesses going to keep our you know mental health in check to like you know and, and so I wanted to kind of do something that um acknowledged what was happening mm -hmm. but kind of embrace the good things that are happening which is also like okay so cons are starting to happen again there's a little bit of hope a little bit of light coming in yeah. And I really want to thank Stormy Bolts because I've wanted to work with them for a while, actually. Um, and I've just, timing has been like, just unfortunate. <laughs> so, Let's, I, I got to say yeah. that is so, that's so good, Jessica. Really good. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you know, you. You know like, I'll, I'll tell you something. So Christina was talking to me when we were about to, when we were, yesterday, I think, when she was talking to you about the show and who you're working with. And you said, oh, it's so interesting how our, you know, we kind of circle around the same people. And then it ended, I know, up being, it's weird. <laughs> that ended up being Stormy Vault. And the first thing Christina yeah. said was, yeah, she knows what I'm going to say. She <laughs> goes, well, Dahlia has an exclusive with Stormy Vault. The best thing about this now is that I am going to get the Jessica Emmett piece. Well, no, I said <laughs> I, have, I said I have a chance at getting. Oh, a chance. Sorry, a chance. A chance. <laughs> Because I mean, actually, I'll be they, in the they, building. They, they actually <laughs> told me that you were doing something with them when I asked them for permission. So, because yeah. like, of, you know, like I was like, oh, actually, I didn't realize that you because I knew you'd done some things with them before. So yes. I thought that was a nice little thing. And I think that like that's the thing. I'm often intersecting with other artists. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I can't imagine. It, it's a, it's it's amazing that I even met you in Singapore in the first place, and now I'm doing an interview on your show. <laughs> Like, right. And now you're making toys yourself. Like, yeah, no, right. I mean, you were already a talented customizer, but like, it's 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 not even that long ago. Do you know no, what I mean? Really, yeah. Such it, a small world. It is world. amazing how you know. Yeah. I'm thinking about your story uh, that you told here. It's like if you hadn't raised your hand to be at that booth. I know. Just think about little decisions <laughs> like that. What a difference it makes in the trajectory I, of our lives, right? So agree with that. So agree. Uh, and then, oh yeah, and then that also brings on to the next one. So it's a similar colorway. Um, and this is the exclusive. Oh, by the way, um, both of these pieces are LE3. So there's only three oh. of these. And I didn't even make APs for myself because I haven't had time. <laughs> so, like, yeah, this is like really, really LE3. Amount. Oh, I love this. I, we loved that the last time you had that out, the yeah. different colorway. So yeah. this is not angsty. And it's yeah. all about anxiety. So mm -hmm. it's that knot you get inside. Yeah. So, you know, obviously it's a similar theme. And um, again, Invasion Toys, this is for Invasion Toys. Um, it's a, 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 a it's a shop that I've wanted to work with for a while. Um, mm -hmm. I really love their blog. They're doing some great articles and that's how I kind of got in touch with them originally. Cause they- Oh yeah, yeah, they've been, they, I love their blog. I, I was- Yeah, uh, it's a great blog, right? Well, I was yeah, introduced to them, I was introduced to them when I was starting to get to know uh, Fluff Riot more and they did a ah, nice write up on Fluff Riot. Yeah, who's yeah, yeah. an artist in Greece, right? And then their story- Oh, oh no, I, I, I know Fluff Riot. I know, I know you do. I'm, I, <laughs> I, I'm elaborating for anybody who's listening or watching. Right? It's like, you know, uh, we all, you know, who doesn't know Fluff Riot at this point, but it's like, but the way they wrote the story was really well done. I mean, so they're very yeah. talented at that aspect. Yeah, oh, it was a really I, good remark. I, I think that like full articles are so interesting. Cause I mean, yeah. like, the thing is, I think that is the way to go because like 
with toy news like you you can't really keep up with it because of the fact that artists release it themselves you know like it's like very difficult yeah we spent so, we spent the last what is it we're now into september almost and so we're going to go through november because we're going to do we're doing one artist interview a week from may all the way through decon which is in november uh-huh. And then after Decon, we're planning on switching it to focus more on the retail aspect of designer toys and talk to like oh. the to talk yeah. to the Stormy Vaults and the yeah, yeah, yeah. Invasion Toys and the Pop Shop, you know, all those I, and you know, bubble wrap. I, and I think it's so worth. I, I think it's worth it because I mean, they're also a part of the toy scene. And hundred percent. I mean, and the, but the thing is, I'm actually very choosy about it. I'm not. I don't just like work with anyone. Like I actually. Um, spend a long time before I'll even agree to work with someone because um, I want to know that I'll gel, you know, like my yeah. work will gel and like that they have the same aspirations and hopes because like basically the way that I conduct everything is that like I try to make good work. I try to work with good people that have good intentions, not only for my work, but for the community at large. And if they can fulfill those things, mm -hmm. I, I want to, work with them Does that yeah. make sense? and there's so many of them i mean mm. the industry thing the industry indi yeah, interesting thing about technology and applies to everything we're doing here right now podcasting streaming making art going to retail and doing cons like technology has created a space in which anybody can do it now right Absolutely. it used to be so unapproachable like if you wanted to make oh, a yeah. toy 20 years ago like forget about it you're not making a toy like you're not getting the materials you don't know how to do it I mean, it really, the cost of entry was so high. Same thing with like streaming online or whatever. And nowadays, anybody can do it. So I think it's even on the flip side it becomes more important to make sure that you're working with the right people. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think that's the thing. I mean, because artists don't need galleries in the same right. way that no. we used to traditionally. Because I, obviously, I come from a traditional art background. You know, having agents and, and galleries was like so important to to actually be a working artist. Yep. That is not the case anymore. Um, and and I think that like me as an artist, I need to know what the gallery or the shop brings to the table. And I don't mean that in a, in a horrid way, but like I need to know that like it's not it's not about exposure per se, but like. I need to know what they're doing for their percentage because I'm working hard on mine. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I want to know what they're doing. Yeah. And I don't mean that in any horrid, like, like greedy way. I just, I think that like when you're working with people, I think you, you need to be working towards the same goal. Does that well, it's sense? like any relationship, right? Mm -hmm. If it's one sided, it doesn't exactly. work very long. It needs to be exactly. mutually beneficial. Exactly. And, and yeah, I yeah. agree. And it's like, you can't be, you know, we talked to a lot of artists and the artists are always talking about that. Like, well, by the time you make the art, and then, you know, because there's that whole thing about pricing. Uh, that's the hardest thing to do. So how do you oh, price yeah. <laughs> yeah, No, I know, I know. I know. And then what people don't realize, like, how much did it cost you to get to the point of making your first toy? And then all the materials and equipment that you have to be able to make them at your house. Like, I've spent... And just how do you value your time? And your time. Uh, but then it's well, like... I don't value it that well. <laughs> <laughs> right. None of us do, honestly. Yeah, yeah. None of us do. And then you put it in a and then you put it in a shop yeah. where you may have been able to sell it yourself. And it's like, well, why am I giving you 40%? Why am I giving you 30%? Is it because that's my exposure? Because really I look at the partnerships of becoming like an opportunity yeah. to see things. Like, you know, there's there's a difference exactly. between going with clutter studios on a designer toy or you know, going with a startup. I'm not gonna name a name because I don't want. They're all. They're all. No, pretty no, 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 no. I mean, but what, yeah. what I'm saying, I, I, t I totally think we're on the same page. I think mm -hmm. that, like, you know, I think you, you, you need to know what what you're getting yourself into. So even if it is just a straight like retail situation, as long as you understand and know that going into it, then that's fa fine. But like my t my time is actually precious, and I get to choose who I work to work. That's the one good thing mm -hmm. about being a freelancer, uh, and like working for myself I get to choose who I work with um, and this actually brings me on to a, a, like my my biggest reveal all right the last reveal okay all right that's perfect so, time, I'm not allowed to, to say much or even say who I'm working with but I want to say that the reason that I decided to work with them is because they gel so well with how I feel about the toy industry and I'm really into what they want to do and so um 
it was more we actually had more conversations about like what what we were hoping and thinking about rather than about what we were actually going to do because I think we were just seeing to see if we were a good fit at all and I think that was the best way of doing it and I I, I really appreciate that and so I don't and en I didn't enter this project lightly so a this is the original one this is just a a product uh, just a cast that I did at home so everyone knows emu cloud <laughs> yeah you see you have one <laughs> I'd like so you have a painter you know the thing is all my stuff's still on pot mart so I actually she didn't have any finished stuff not very little <laughs> finished stuff here so um I this one's painted up so this is a a 3d uh no a, a three inch one that I did mm -hmm. and they decided that they were so talking about technology, they blew my mind because they basically took this little thing, put it in a really high res 3D scanner. And um, I want to show you what came out the other side. Okay, this is like quite heavy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, this is the biggest reveal that I'm going to be doing today. Literally. <laughs> yeah, literally. Oh, wow. So, this is a six inch. Emo cloud. Now Emo it's cloud, only a yeah. prototype, so it's not necessarily the size that it might end up. But you can see it next to this. That's so beautiful. Like actually, they look really good together. Like you can imagine like a little family <laughs> of them all together, like yeah. little brainstorm little cloud Emo family. Cloud. Yeah. So this is just painted up with um, with primer. It's not actually any final. This is just mm -hmm. just to show you guys. Um, literally, um, I am so happy to be able to show you guys this. Um, this is currently in, in progress. So, um, we're not sure exactly how it's going to, uh, you know, what, what the product at the end is going to be a hundred percent yet, because we're still working on things. Um, but I am absolutely thrilled to be working with a team that have brought this together. And the reason that I think technology is amazing is because they just took my, sculpt and then they like 3d scanned it made a 3d model blew it up and this is actually a solid 3d print oh wow. like such a high quality oh, uh wow. resin and stuff and like um i think it took ages <laughs> and i didn't i don't think it was that cheap either so like no, um, probably not no probably not yeah, yeah um but it's really hefty but we were looking at the weight and we were just looking at to see whether or not this was an option but 3d printing especially in singapore because actually getting resin for production is not that easy in singapore uh for for indie makers at least mm -hmm. so a lot of people are turning to 3d printing and I've spent a lot of effort this year trying to learn 3D printing. But this was actually a scan of my original. And the thing is, like, I made the original Emo Cloud in, like, only a day or two. So I had no idea that in, like, a year it was going to be used as the basis of a production piece. <laughs> right. I mean, so the important, the important thing here is that Emo Cloud started out as a sculpted piece, right? Like, you... Yes. You sculpted it, and then you cast yeah. it, and then you made resin pieces. So that turned that yeah. into a digital. Yeah, that's so crazy. it's almost yeah. the other way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Usually people start with a three D. Yeah. They start with the digital version, three D sculpt it. Now nowadays, it's three D sculpt it in the computer, print it out, and then cast it. So that's really this cool. was one cast that I did, and mm -hmm. then they basically took one that I worked on a lot to make it look, make sure it was a, a good version. <laughs> Like, right. <laughs> and then and then they basically that came out the other side and That's like it. just um, you can like send that 3d file to anyone in the world get it printed get it produced and i'm i'm starting to realize how much um 3d file <laughs> of your work is king basically yeah. Yeah. like Princess, and that's Princess why Kate. i'm really hard working it <laughs> take all my money <laughs> And there's so many email cloud emo email cloud owners here, Mountain Meg. I love my oh, own yeah. email cloud. Yeah. So I, I I think it's it's great because I haven't actually made that many email clouds. <laughs> so, um and I'm so thrilled to work with the, the team that I'm working with at the moment. Um that they have it's 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 so hard to give something, especially the email cloud, over to someone else to to you know to kind of work mm -hmm. on it. And um they they understand why I've done it and like I I know you guys know but maybe not other people but emo cloud is a depressed cloud 
but it's hopeful, a hopeful depressed cloud, basically. Mm -hmm. And it I was do love that a lot of your work has um, yes. an underlying of of uh, emotion. So either yes, like the, the anxiety bunny or yes, um, it it um or your new merlion. I mean, just the meanings and the something. colors. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, that that's exactly what it is. Like uh, to work with people that that understand the emotion behind the work. Cause like my work isn't like super hype or anything. It's like, you know, it's, 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 it's calmer. It's, but it's like, it has a serious undertone, even though it's like super, super cute. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm really happy with the team that I'm working with. Um, and I, you have no idea how I like, I just want to hold it up. Cause I'm like, it's so exciting. I get to talk about it. That's but cool, I only uh... get to talk about it a little bit. <laughs> That's very nice. That's great. You know what? I'm I'm floored that you got to tell us even a little bit. That's amazing. Well, I'm so glad yeah. that I got to give you so many exclusive. Well, set first first uh, sneak peeks. Well, only three. Well, only three now. Christina's gonna have to feel bad if she buys one of them now. Yeah, that's tough. Well, that's okay. I'm feeling a little bit bad. But I'll feel really bad if I miss them. <laughs> yeah, I, I, will, I have to tell you. I have to tell you a story, Jessica. So you know, obviously, you know, you know Jason Rowe barely, yes. like barely available. Yep. You did. You did his art show. You did a uh, watercolor barely. Yes. Um, we were after that so much. So he went live <laughs> on. Uh, Tried so I, hard. I, I, I buy a lot of things and I miss a lot of things. We actually literally during con <laughs> when we do cons, yeah. we actually have a segment for this podcast or live show or whatever it is nowadays. Um called L is for lottery because we often lose them all. We lose every lottery. Oh, we lose, no. lose <laughs> so true. And we we, we've come really good. So we, we take, we're our own email cloud, if you will. Like we're, <laughs> we're disappointed, but we're hopeful because we do it again. We keep doing yes, it. And, yes, you know. yes. And, um, I, was and so, I don't think, I don't think I've seen Christina or myself more gutted when we missed that. We had it in the shopping cart. Oh no. <laughs> And I went yeah. after it and I went to go buy that barely piece and was not and meant to be. It was not meant I, to be. I mean, I'm sure it's in a good home. Jesse won't tell me where it went. It, it is. It is in a good home. I, no, I have to kidding, admit that that piece, I had several people tell me afterwards they went for it. Yeah. Like, which oh, yeah, was yeah. unprecedented for me as well. Cause like, I was like, I didn't realize that so many people would like, like it. Do you know what I mean? Cause I, it, it was quite a departure from what, well, because the water—it was when I was started doing the watercolor stuff. Because mm -hmm. um, I think I made, uh, Christy, I made myself feel better with this one. Yes. So there you go. That's a, that's that a is piece. Yeah, the very, that. very, very first watercolor designer toy I ever made. So actually, that's probably more historic than the other one. If that makes you feel better. <laughs> Like I said, I I was very very sad about the barely. I won't lie. Yeah, I mean but, Christina really is first world problem because she's sitting over there with a desk full of Jessica Emma toys, right? And uh, and then I also have I also have this one to go with it, cause, and and this one has the the ink as well. Oh, it's great. I I, I <laughs> haven't done many of the small watercolor ones, so that was that was a fun one. I was just one day I was like, you know what? I feel like doing a piece. So <laughs> the feathers are amazing, like. The detail is is just mind-boggling. I mean, I think the thing is, I love doing these watercolor pieces, but they are extremely taxing. Oh, they yeah. are complicated. <laughs> <laughs> they they take layers and layers of like um, like it it, it takes. First of all, you have to uh, prime it like you would just a normal acrylic piece. Then I have to put three layers of watercolor ground, and that's um, it. If I don't have to have like do the feet like it's on a stick or something then it only takes three days because it takes 24 hours but if it has mm. feet and i have to do it underneath oh. it takes like six days oh. <laughs> like because i have to i have to wait for it to dry before i can turn it over um and then you have to use two types of varnish on it one to fix it because you can't use um acrylic varnish on normal like watercolor or ink so like I have to do a fix. Right, because it'll run. Right, 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 right. Yeah, it's right. going to run there yeah, because it will really affect it. And then, I, and then I have to put the final <laughs> layer on top. <laughs> yeah, that's something that work. But yeah. it comes out. It, it, it is worth really it. a great technique. It's worth it. It's great. Thank you. And we're really looking forward to seeing uh, your releases there. And I think it's funny you tell the story, and I, and I always point this out because I think I swear I have the same conversation with every artist. But you're like so many people. So they went after it and I was so surprised. <laughs> right? You know, it's funny because <laughs> no, I, I think, and I think it's fantastic. And I think that's what makes, uh, um, you know, working with someone like you, you know, more special because it's like you, you are surprised. You generally love what you're doing. 
And <laughs> and when you love what you're doing, you're putting your art out there. It's a very um, it's funny because like you, you know Reese O'Brien. We've had him we had him on the show not long ago, and still to this day, Reese is like. I made this thing and I hope people like it. And of course it sells out in two seconds, right? He's like, oh, <laughs> yes, I was, I'm surprised. And I'm like, are you surprised? Seriously, I can't believe you're over here. I'm not surprised. <laughs> like you could tell me you're making 20 of those anxiety buddies. I, I, I'm still worried about getting it, let alone three. Now we got to like, like <laughs> now we got to cheat. No, I'm just kidding. We wouldn't never do that. <laughs> but, but, uh, but it is that humility though. I see a common thread in artists. It's like, you know, you're putting your, your, your heart, your emotion, your soul into what you're creating. And, and you could tell by the stories you're telling about it. Like, thank you. The emo, what the cloud means, anxiety, but I want to mean what the colors mean. Mm -hmm. And it is such a, now it's even better. You look at that story and you think about it. You're right. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's so dark, but look at the hope. Yeah. You know, and so you look at this piece. I was a bit worried because yeah. you wouldn't normally make it so dark. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But I actually purposefully mm -hmm. made it quite dark. So I didn't quite make it black. It was kind of like a really dark yeah, yeah. gray, but which like is, um, which is great. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of wanted to represent that. I mean, like, um, so you saw the emo cloud. Oh, this one is one of the few that I have had on hand. Oh so yes, Katessi is um, uh, a representation of me and my husband, and uh, <laughs> I absolutely have to thank him always because he always helps me with my work. He's like such a rock um mm. and then um oh even this one this one's like a a uk inspired one because i come from a, <laughs> i come from a town in the uk called skipton and it's actually translates as sheep town because there's a lot of farms around there mm -hmm. and i like this idea of having a split personality well not a split personality because like a lot of people even in toys they say oh jess you're so nice you're so smiley and i'm like but i'm other things you know i get i get mad I get annoyed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I have other emotions. So I like the idea that you can still be many things, but you're still cool. one thing at the same time. Yeah, Christine's the same way. She's all many, she's many things. Yeah, many. well, I mean, I trust I me, I'm many are, things. Right? We all are many things. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that the thing like, is, I think that out. sometimes we're chalked down to one thing, you know, even well, as artists. Well, it's because as an artist, you're, you, you, most of the people you're interacting with is on the public side of what you're doing, right? And so your persona becomes tied to that or becomes tied to the art. Or, or in many times, it could be tied to the feeling they get from your art. Your style could become who they think you are. Um, I know. I mean, the problem I have at the moment, I mean, it's okay, okay. It's, it's, it's not a terrible problem, but it's just that, like, if I say to someone, oh, I'm not sure what to do for this custom, they'll be like, I'll just put watercolor in it. It'll be fine, Jess. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like, ah, oh, I know. I mean, I've literally just like basically coined the technique. <laughs> I know I could use that if I need to, but mm -hmm. like, you know, because I have so much meaning in my work, it, it, the technique is just a means to an end to express an idea. Right. But you're, but you're an artist. Yeah. You want to do different things. You know what I mean? Sort of like uh, you hear stories yeah. of uh, bands that don't want to play their hit song. Exactly. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, oh, I know I could do watercolor. I've done it so many times. I'm like, yeah. whatever. I want to do something new. I want to try something else out. I want the next hit. You know, I want the, yeah. not that you're going for a hit, but you know what I mean? You want the next I thing that. That's I, get, exactly I get that way too. Do. You don't yeah, always yeah. want to do the same thing. Well, why don't you think I don't do unicorns anymore? I actually said that once I finish my, my batch of unicorns, I still have a few, but once I finish those, I'm probably not going to revisit it because it's just, it, it didn't really say much to me. I love them. They're cute. And they obviously the things that I started with and how people got to know me, but mm -hmm. it's not like it wasn't, I needed to express my style more. You know? I mean, and they're, they're unicorns. Yeah. So it's not reinventing the wheel. I yeah, mean, I know. I know. It, uh, I mean, unicorns are great. I love unicorns, but oh, me too. Your, your character <laughs> yeah. design is so much more than that. So I, I totally get why you would want to invent yeah. your own mythical creatures and go I mean, and explore I don't that. Have the original I don't have a painted up one this is only a tester piece but this was the first where I decided that yeah so like it's That's okay cool so piece, it's, yeah. it's a bit crappy because it's like it's, it's such a it's such a tester piece but like I realized that I needed to go beyond you know a, original a uh, not original uh, pre-existing creatures because I started with unicorns I did a um merlion and then I did mm -hmm. a manticore and mm -hmm. I, I kept going I kept doing like a like you know pre-existing ones, and I was like, you know what, I need to do something in my own style. So, yeah, 
now we're here. <laughs> well, I I predict that it'll uh, it'll do just fine. I I know people. I mean, I see people in the chat already. You know, Princess Kate, others like that's what they're going to go for at New York Comic Con. I know Christina is a fan. You know, we may make art too, but you know, I think we're all fans of art too, and and so we love to add those pieces of art to collection that mean something and. I would say that the best part about designer toys for me and why I've really departed from mass manufactured kind of pop culture stuff into designer toys is the people behind it. Mm-hmm. You know, every right. piece that I, a lot of the pieces that I own now, like mm-hmm. I know the hands that made it, I know the mind that went into it and the people behind it. Yeah. And when you buy something like that and you look at it yourself, it yeah. reminds you of the people and the friends that you've made. Oh yeah. Uh, it I means mean, a lot more, I don't right? have many, in my collection, because I I'm, I'm quite a casual collector, but I, I collect artists rather than yep, exactly. pieces. Because like I yep. I appreciate what the artist is bringing to the table. Does that right. make sense? Yep, yeah. absolutely. And I, I'm yep. the same way. Like I love knowing that I'm supporting um, art, and I'm supporting what they're doing, and I hope that they it creates an ability for them to keep doing mm-hmm. um, the art. Cause that's what it turns around to. Well, look, we 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 kept you late. You know, we promised you oh, now. I'm you're sorry, going... I kept you late. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's great. I want to be, you know, you got to get your Sunday going, you know? So, um, you know, real quick, just so everybody knows, so New York Comic Con, it's October 6th through the 9th. Um, you're going to have exclusives with Invasion Toys as well as Stormy Vault. Um, you can find Stormy Vault because uh, that's also where Dahlia will be um, in New York Comic Con. We have a Dahlia release uh, with them for New York Comic Con exclusive as well. Um, and before we go, I do want to thank everybody here. Um, the supported Dahlia. We had two releases in the last week since the last show. Um, one with SmyCon, Smy World, um, with SmyCon, the um, the gummy release, and then we had the Honey Dahlia with Beehive. That's very cool. <laughs> and and both uh, and both went uh, again same vein. Christina was looking at it and she was refreshing Beehive, and she was like, "Oh my god, did it sell it that fast? No, it's got to be a problem. Hold on." Like, <laughs> It's like no way, no way it sold out that fast. And uh, oh, congratulations! Love, <laughs> they both were like like gone, and we had friends messaging us like I tried and it didn't work. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure you get those messages too. And it, and you know and, it, and it, you feel so bad because you're like you're like oh well we're gonna make more. I want to make you one now. Oh my god, I feel so bad. <laughs> I, you know, I do often feel bad about it, but that's also one of. The- one of no. the benefits of having other people sell them for me is that I don't. Have to <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you don't have feel. to. Feel up. <laughs> oh, I no, Cutie you. Duck failed I mean, at both. There's, values. there's not oh. much I can do about it. It's, it's out of yeah. my hands. Well, Cutie <laughs> Duck, if you're if you're going to be in New York, that's that. I, I agree with that. I I really wish that I could get other people to sell my stuff as well. I mean, that maybe that's why I'm doing a lot more of that this year, so I don't have to deal with like. People being like, "Why could I get it?" Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> because I feel bad when people can't. Because there's, I, there's no just realistic limitations so on quantity. That's right. Well, that's why. That's why you got to get. That's why you got to farm out some of the work. You got to focus. You know, you talked about that conversation earlier about you can't do everything. I think what you do is, I work in IT, and you don't outsource the innovation. So you don't outsource the art. That's fundamental. What you do, but other things that don't really impact the artistic nature of what you're trying to do that don't impact what you're yeah. doing. You can control those things like like the 3D, mm-hmm. like scanning your art piece and making sure you sign off on it and then manufacturing it or whatever. You know, those things you can uh, have somebody else do so that you can focus on making more. You can focus yeah, on so the you, piece and uh, scale it. Because you can that's the thing with yeah, designer toys absolutely. people don't realize. You can't scale yeah. it. It's not like I add another three Jessicas to paint them all or whatever. <laughs> you you, oh, you can't do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And I can attest to it, like, I can't do any more than, like, 15 or 20, and you're like, I don't want to look at this design ever again. Oh, I know. Let alone- I, I, I feel comfortable with about 5 to 10, yeah. and after 10, I start, like, going, I I never want to do this again, ever, yeah. like, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Am I proposing to clone Christina? Absolutely not. Absolutely. One, all I need is one Christina. <laughs> Good Just answer. like she would say, she would say the same thing. She does not want to deal with more than one demon in this house. Trust me. Oh, I don't. Nobody <laughs> wants that. Nobody wants that. I wouldn't be able. I would hate the guy. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> anyway, all kidding aside, yep. thank you yep. so much for coming on the show. I do have to ask for you, and I, I know we talked to you about it before. We we yes. are, <laughs> are going to be doing a Dahlia show. We don't know when. With the whole timing of it all, it threw us all off. But we are going to be doing something. It's it's going to be next year, so it'll be in 2022. But we wanted to have everybody who joined us for these interviews to 
contribute a piece to the show and we'd love to have you take your stab at Adalia. Well, I mean, I told this to Christina ages ago when it was <laughs> brought up casually in conversation that of obviously I would do it. I like I I love it. I think it's super cute. I like I like the fact it's a tiny bit creepy as well. I, I, I'm, it's kind awesome. of my, it's my vibe, right? Yeah. So I, I would love to do it. And to be honest with you, next year is way better anyway. <laughs> oh, totally. I, I agree. Next year is way better. And, I, and I'm looking at the, you know, it's funny. I'm looking at the lineup of people <clears throat> that are going to do this. And I'm like, okay, this is just becoming an undercover method for me just to buy it, just to get them all. <laughs> Finally. Um, yeah. Know, I'm, I, I'm sure that, that herding artists is going to be like herding cats. Oh yeah, that's fine. <laughs> For a custom show. Good luck. <laughs> but it's going to be, I mean, you look at the lineup we have and, and adding you to it. I am, I'm super excited, but thank you so much for oh, your time. Thanks. It's going to be hard yeah, thank you. To, to not keep them all. Let me see. We usually <laughs> at this point in time, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be hard. I mean, that's what I remember talking to Jason Rowe about it when he was, um, when he was doing his show, he was doing his show and he's like, you know, I wanted to keep them all. I wanted to keep them all. And he's like, it was really hard. It was really hard to sell them. Uh, and I totally get it because I think we all love again because you also know what what's involved in it. Like this is something like something that Christina created. Again, barely is creating his figure, giving it to people to put there. It's such an honor, uh, and I can't wait to see him. I'm so excited about it. Next year can't come fast enough, but we'll figure it out. We're gonna figure out the format. We're trying to figure out do we want to do like a, a charity thing or not. We'll figure it out, get the details out, and we'll make sure we get the uh, products to everybody. And yeah, I think it would be great. I think yeah. I think that it would be great to see how people interpret that character. I, I think it's super cute. Yeah. It'll, it'll be, I, it'll be really interesting for, for me to see how what other people's take yep. on, on the character. It'll be fun. Yep. All right. Well, we're going to go as usual. We're going to go ahead and raid STS guys. They are live right now talking about, I don't know what they're talking about today, but they're, you know, I'm sure we'll figure that out. Thanks a lot, Jessica. Again, it was a pleasure speaking with you and getting to know you more. And we really look forward to seeing your pieces in person in New York. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. And thanks everyone that joined. I know there was quite a few people that said they were going to come and have a peek. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we abso absolutely. Um, and next week, uh, what, do, what do we have next week? I'm looking at my schedule here. Next week, we're actually off. So next week, we're taking for Labor Day. Uh, we're not going to be streaming next week uh, for the holiday weekend. Um, but we'll be back the week after with Dubose Art. Well, I'm looking forward to talking to him too. He does the uh, the skull danglers and totally different, you know, totally more aggressive stuff. So <laughs> looking forward to that. Thanks everyone again. See you uh, next time. Bye. Bye.